Earlier this year, my former elementary school teacher shared stories of a visitor she frequently receives in her backyard, the pine marten. She had grown fond of the animal and asked me to make a pine marten figurine that could double as a Christmas tree ornament. I agreed, and this is my Christmas present to her. This project was one that definitely pushed me outside of my comfort zone. Despite working closely off reference photos, I failed many times to create the Pine Martin, and instead made curious looking things that resembled other animals. Not gonna lie, I walked away from the project many times to clear my head. And it was on one of these walks that I had the first light bulb moment of this project. This quartz crystal that I found at the local crystal store. Does it remind you of anything? Because I was reminded of this. For the sake of this project, I did something I usually never do. Drafting. I swear this looks better in my head. So we have the characters. Peter Pie Martin and Pansy Pie Martin, and Snack, aka Vol. I started with Peter Pie Martin. After I passed the clay through the pasta machine to make sure it was well conditioned, I rolled out the clay until I had the perfect Pie Martin body length. And with a butter knife, I marked where the neck would be. Using the quartz crystal as reference, I pinched just above the line I made to make the snout. With the steel ball tool, I actually have no idea what these are called, I made a groove on either side of the face. This not only accentuates the snout, but it also pushes some clay towards the top of the head, which is helpful when pinching the ears up. As we saw earlier, the side profile of the Pine Martin tapers into a point, so here I am replicating that by smoothing the entire area from the forehead down to the tip of the nose. Looking back now, I think this might have been a redundant step, but... You know what, it looks cool and impressive. Here I am adding a small ball of clay on either side of the face to make the cheeks. When you're making things with clay, I think the most time consuming thing is smoothing things out. But you know what, it's very therapeutic because you can just focus on the task at hand and zone out. Because Peter Pie Martin will be standing up, I made sure he was bottom heavy so that he doesn't flop over. To do this, I just added a strip of clay at the bottom and smoothed it out. At this point, I put aside Peter Pie Martin to make Snack, aka the Vole. When I was thinking of how I was going to attach the Vole to Peter Pie Martin, I was very conscious of the fact that she would be using this as a Christmas tree ornament. I could foresee the Vole breaking off easily if I attached it directly to the mouth of Peter Pie Martin. It was at this point I had the second light bulb moment. I have these tiny, tiny magnets. If I stick this magnet in the Pine Martin's mouth and put a piece of wire in the vole's back, maybe I could get away with not gluing or sticking anything. Let's see how this is going to stick. <laughs> oh, wow. Magic. I am so tempted to try this. Oh yeah. 
I'm very excited about this magnet trick, and I'll be definitely using it for future projects. The only thing is, I didn't know magnets demagnetized when it was heated, so yeah, for future reference, don't bake the clay with the magnets. Now for the tail. Again, I didn't want to attach it directly to the body for reasons I mentioned earlier, so I solved this with eye pins. I inserted one in the bum of the pie martin and one in the tail, so that after the clay was baked, the tail would dangle. At this point, I put aside Peter Pie Martin to start working on Pansy Pie Martin. Basically, I just repeated the entire process. The only difference is Pansy is a little bit smaller and she is posed more flirtatiously, if you will. Once the figurines cooled, the first thing I did was securing the eye pins. To do this, I just pulled out each eye pin and dabbed a bit of glue before inserting it back in place. I realized I forgot to add eye pins on the top of the head where they'd be hanging as ornaments, but this is an easy fix. I just used the smallest drill bit I had and drilled a tiny hole on the head and filled it with liquid clay and raw clay and stuck in the eye pin. After that, I rebaked the clay and secured the eye pin with wood glue. Now at the fun part, painting. For the arms and feet, I used raw umber. For the body, I used a mixture of burnt sienna and yellow okra. And for the face, I primarily used titanium white with a hint of all the other colors mixed in. Once the paint completely dried, I sealed the entire project with resin. This not only makes the entire thing look very glossy and professional, it also protects the piece and makes it very durable. And here is the final product.
Thanks for watching and for letting me share my creative process with you. In the next video, I'll be making an elderly beaver couple. So see you in the next one. Okay, so I will pass this to you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a little look here. Yeah. Oh, they're perfect. Oh, they're perfect. <laughs> Oh, they're a pair. Oh, you got their little faces. Yeah. Yes, they're nosy little faces. They're nosy faces. I struggled a lot with the face. <laughs> Look at the orange here. Oh, they're just perfect. That's a little bowl. <laughs> <laughs> this and is a little monster. Okay, show me how he goes. This is magnetic. Oh, that is it. Oh, Nanako, they're gorgeous. <laughs> Look at them. Also, the story is Pansy okay. is the slave lady pine mutton. Yes. And Peter's tried to woohoo. Oh, the bowl. of course. Yeah. Of course. And look at, she's interested. Not sure what she thinks of Peter, but she does like the boy. <laughs> yeah. She says, I'll go out for dinner with you. Look at them, they're beauties. <laughs> they're absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. They're beautiful. I'm happy you like